something in your house will have been delivered by air freight, whether it be the clothes you're wearing, the device you're watching this on, or even the food on your table. While only about 3% of all cargo worldwide is transported by air each year, this equates to around 35% of the world's total cargo value, showing that air freight is a force to be reckoned with. Whole airports, cities, and even countries depend on air freight to keep themselves going, such as Anchorage Ted Stevens Airport in Alaska. This airport is so dependent upon cargo operations that during the pandemic in 2020, it held the title of the world's busiest airport, largely thanks to its cargo capacity and facilities. Scaling up from just airports, many population centers in the world's remote north, such as Alaska, the Canadian North Territory, Greenland, and Siberia, all depend on the air when the land or sea is impractical or impassable. Venturing south, there's St. Helena, the Falkland Islands, and Antarctica, just to name a few. What this proves is that air cargo is absolutely crucial in today's world. The planes that fly these lifeline connections say a lot about how freighter airlines operate. While not uncommon to receive cargo planes new off the production line, it's more common to receive them secondhand and have them converted from their old lives as passenger planes into freighters. This usually means making a large door on the plane's former passenger deck and reflooring it so it can accommodate cargo pallets. This is why it's now very difficult to fly on a Boeing 747, 757, or 767 these days. Their age means that most of them are no longer suitable for passenger service. This is often because many passenger airlines prefer to have up-to-date fleets to keep operating costs lower and to reflect their brand. With few to no airlines willing to take them up because of their cost to keep them at passenger standards, as well as just higher operating costs as the airframe becomes more and more used, their resale cost is therefore much cheaper. What these cheap aircraft do for cargo carriers is facilitate rapid fleet expansion, therefore making it easier to meet changes and increases in demand. On top of that, the bananas on your table or the camera I just bought online don't care how old the plane it's flying on is. Would it surprise you to hear that there are McDonnell Douglas DC-9s and Boeing 727s still out as parcel haulers? Nostalgic as these planes are though, eventually there comes a day when they will fly for the last time. So what next? What could the future of global air freight hold? What types will replace those we see today? Based on what we now understand about the world of global air freight, we can safely assume that we will see many familiar faces in new roles in the years to come. Starting small, the feeder fleet of airlines are crucial to distribute smaller loads to more remote regions such as FedEx and DHL op operations in the Caribbean with Cessna 208 caravans. An ant among giants, the 208 is one of the most capable and versatile aircraft that Cessna has to offer, delivering seemingly anything that can fit into the back to anywhere it can land. With its simple mechanics, ease of operation, and unpressurized cabin, the 208 is an aircraft that will be flying for decades to come. Cessna, though, has recently released a new utility aircraft called the Cessna 408 Sky Courier. With a capacity for 19 passengers or 8.6 tons of cargo on board, the Sky Courier is slightly larger than the 208, and with its twin-engine, high-wing design, it's more comparable to a twin otter. Currently, FedEx has a standing order for 50 airframes and options for 50 more, and the airline was reportedly even taken into account when developing the 408. Moving up the chain, we arrive at the Embraer and ATR. Embraer has the E-Jet series, but has little experience in the freighter market. Only the company's earlier models, the Embraer 110 and 120, have been used for moderate cargo usage. However, never took the world by storm. In March 2022, however, Embraer announced that they would be entering the small aircraft freighter market by offering cargo conversions of their more modern aircraft, the E-190 and 195 respectively, under the names of the E-190F and E-195F, but these are understood to be P2F slash passenger to freighter variants rather than new airframes. The decision to do this was cited to be the rapid growth of the freighter market, even outperforming the passenger market in recent years. These new e-jets are due to cater to the e-commerce rapid delivery markets, however, will of course be capable of delivering regular main deck cargo as well. What the E190 and 195F have that caters for the e-commerce markets is their small cargo holds below the main cabin. 
These cannot be used for pallets, like on an A320. Instead, they are home to loose bags and miscellaneous freight, such as individual packages, which are the delivery method of choice for the e-commerce world. Although none have yet been delivered, these e-jet freighters have gained some traction with an order for 10 E-190 and 195Fs from leasing company Nordic Aviation Capital with deliveries from 2024. The first two examples are due to enter service with Astral Aviation based in Kenya. Over in Europe, we find ATR. ATR is no stranger to the air freight world. Constantly refining and perfecting their tried and tested ATR 42 and 72 designs, the company currently offers both its newest options, the ATR 42 and 72-600s in dedicated cargo variants. However, older examples have been converted to freighters from passenger service for many years now. Currently though, ATR has no plans to introduce any new types Therefore, the 42 and 72 will continue to fly in freighter service all over the world for years to come. A handful of CRJ-200 converted freighters are also flying around, but their numbers are limited. Based on the proven abilities of the CRJ-200F, it is conceivable that its larger cousins, the CRJ-700, 900, and 1000, could one day see freighter variants, but there are currently no plans to do so. Launched in July 2022, De Havilland, Canada, the owners of the rights to the Dash 8 have launched the Q400QC Quick Change Program, allowing for a Dash 8 Q400 to be fitted with a cargo door and have its seats removed quickly and simply, freeing up the cabin, palletized freight. Sold as conversion kits rather than new built airframes, the two operators have elected for the first Q400QC, those being Canada's Jazz Aviation, who will be the type's launch customer with 13 on order, and Ethiopian Airlines, who have two firm orders and two additional options. Getting larger, we move on to the two industry giants, Airbus and Boeing. Toulouse-based Airbus has seen a recent resurgence in its freighter products after a lull in these operations from approximately 2006, the year of the final A300-600F delivery, until 2017. In this time, Airbus launched the dedicated freighter version of the A330, the A330-200F. However, this type failed to sweep the market in ways that its counterparts at Boeing, or even its predecessor, the A300, managed to do in years gone by. This is because its main deck cabin was fractionally too narrow to fit the standard containers that wide-body aircraft use. As a result, the type had to have its containers custom made and with only 32 airframes produced, the cabin cross-section and container problem made the type inefficient to operate if the right size containers were not available. Those that were made do still fly today and have found uses as the number of containers increased and air cargo demand rose. Similarly, the number of A330 freighters has actually grown since the last dedicated freighter left the production line in 2015. In 2017, Airbus entered into a joint venture with Elbe Flugzeugwerke of Dresden, Germany, which led to the A330 P2F, a passenger to freighter conversion for the type. With older A330s now going through the conversion process, it's safe to say that A330 freighters will become more of a frequent sight in the skies above. The A330 isn't the only Airbus type receiving a P2F conversion. In 2015, Airbus, again in partnership with Elbe Flugzeugwerke, launched the A320 and A321 P2F program. However, this materialized later than its A330 counterpart. The first A321 P2F entered service in October 2020 with Qantas. The latter was followed by the first A320 P2F entering service with India's Praden Air in July 2022. However, currently though, Airbus has no in-house freighter ambitions for the A320 family. Airbus' largest freighter aircraft is its famed brand new A330-700 Beluga XL. Based on an A330-300, the Beluga XL was designed to replace its older stablemate, the original Beluga, based on the A300-600. The new XL is more efficient, has a greater range, and a greater lift capacity and cargo volume. But the now surplus original Belugas were still valuable aircraft that could still serve a purpose. Seeing a large gap in the market in January 2022, Airbus announced that these surplus Belugas would now be used to transport outsized cargo around the world, 
in the same way that dedicated aircraft like the Antonov 124 does. Since its launch, the Belugas have been spotted in all sorts of places that they otherwise wouldn't have been, such as Japan and Brazil, to name a few. And with the sanctions placed on Russia after the invasion of Ukraine, one of the world's main specialist heavy lift carriers, Volga Nept, is now locked inside Russia, allowing companies like Airbus to swoop in and take their spot with their fleet of Belugas. Lastly, with Airbus, in early August 2021, the company officially announced that they intend to produce a freighter version of the A350-1000, due to be delivered to its first customers in 2025, the A350F currently has 14 orders, split equally between Singapore Airlines and Air Lease Corporation. This is Airbus' first commercial freighter built in-house since the last A330-200F was delivered in 2015. Airbus will be pioneering technologies with this project as the A350 will be the first freighter to be made out of predominantly carbon composite materials. Crossing the Atlantic, we meet Boeing. Boeing is a company that has a strong lead in the commercial freighter market, with almost every type that they have ever produced since the 707 having a freighter version, with the exception of the 717 and 787. Currently, Boeing offers a range of dedicated cargo aircraft, some of which you may be surprised to know are still in production. Starting with the in-house options, we begin with the 767-300F. Yes, that's right, the 767 is still in production as a freighter only, over 40 years after its first flight, which stands as a testament to the type's robust design and effectiveness as a cargo aircraft. With the 767 being made in such great numbers, airframes are numerous and are still some of the most frequently converted types. Getting larger, we meet the Boeing 777F. Based on the 777-200LR, the type is still in production and receiving orders. It has been necessary to keep the original 777 production line open in recent years as the new 777X isn't yet ready to replace it. So, for the time being, the line stays open so that customers who need 777s can get 777s. But Boeing is no longer the only company to make 777 freighters. In October 2019, a partnership was announced between aircraft leasing company Gekas and Israel Aerospace Industries to begin the conversion of the Boeing 777-300ERs to cargo usage. It was dubbed the 777-300ERSF and is due to enter service with Kalita Air in the coming years. The 300-ER has a main deck capacity comparable to that of the 747-400F, which may make it more attractive, quicker, more efficient, and a cheaper option in the short term when pitted up against a new 777F or an older 747. This brings us on to the 777-8F. The 777-8 is the shorter variant of the troubled 777X program, which still has yet to enter service. While it does have orders from the likes of Qatar Airways and Silkway, it has struggled to gain traction and it is now due to enter service in 2027, two years after its main competitor, the A350F, and with a price tag much higher than any second-hand conversion on the market today. Getting smaller, the Boeing 737 family is also no stranger to cargo. It's no secret that there are still 737-200s working hard in the Canadian North, and cargo is now an enormous usage for the 737 Classic family. However, even in the great numbers they were built in, these aircraft are showing their age and will be needing replacing. Fortunately for 737 operators, the next family of 737, the 737NG slash next generation, is now over 20 years old, all originally delivered as passenger aircraft being used on short route with multiple daily pressurization cycle and a new 737 to replace it, the 737NG lands right in the crosshairs of the freighter conversion market. First delivered in 2018, Boeing 737BCF, Boeing Converted Freighter, has been very warmly welcomed into the world's cargo markets, joining the fleets of Atlanta Air UK, WestJet, Amazon Prime Air, SpiceJet, Ethiopian Airlines, Alaska Airlines, and more. Currently, over 50 of the type, and a backlog of orders spread over both the 737-700 and 800 type has been an immediate hit. United States environmental regulations have made it necessary for Boeing to end both the 767 and 777F production lines by 2027, 
and to take its place, Boeing has been strongly considered replacing the 767 with a cargo version of the 787, although no commitment has yet to be made. While possible, this would prove difficult and potentially costly as the type's carbon composite fuselage will need strengthening around its main deck cargo door thanks to additional pressurization pressures exerted on it. As said with the A350F, a carbon composite freighter has never yet been made. The last option with Boeing is the 747-8F, with the last ever example due to be delivered to Atlas Air in early 2023, the last of the type has now rolled off the production line, making an end to this incredible type. Although there are comparable aircraft out there with similar capacity, such as the 777-300ERSF or the 747-400F, many of them are either old and costly to maintain, in need of replacement, or few in numbers. And what the 747 has that most conventional air freighters do not have is its nose door. This allows it to carry loads that are larger than its cargo door on the side of the fuselage, which is where the cargo door on most other cargo planes is. While the 747 will likely continue to fly for maybe upwards of 30 years into the future, it is safe to say that the loss of a plane with a nose door for cargo is a loss in capabilities. Getting larger, we reach Antonov. Largely paralyzed by the war in Ukraine, this leaves much of its available fleet of AN-124s in exile, and the company's main focus is just keeping afloat rather than any new projects. However, Hostomel Airport, Antonov's home base, was the first target in the opening hours of Russia's invasion of Ukraine in late February 2022. The airport was intended to be a bridgehead for Russian forces to land and begin the invasion fully. The Ukrainian forces that were mobilized in these opening hours heroically repelled this attack and held the airport. However, during this fighting, the company's one and only AN-225 was destroyed in the combat. A true symbol of Ukraine, this aircraft, the largest in the world, was vowed by President Zelensky to be rebuilt. A second 225 sits approximately 60% complete in a hangar at Hostomel, with an estimated price tag of 460 million U.S. 2012 estimate to complete. Help for this project has been reportedly offered by the British airline tycoon Sir Richard Branson, as well as Antonov reportedly asking for help from Airbus, Boeing, and Embraer to help rebuild the aircraft called Mirya, the Ukrainian word for dream. This has been a rough guide as to what may be seen in the future of air freight, and not a prediction. At the end of the day, only time will tell. What is for certain is that the world's air freight market will continue to increase and evolve into something that can serve us all in a way that should be celebrated. <music>